Hi there, Lee Griggs, Arnold Rendering Specialist at Autodesk. I just want to give a brief overview of these bubble renders uh, using uh, nested dielectrics in M2A. Okay, so here's the scene. Um, we've got uh, an X-Gen description for the instance spheres. There's a million spheres here. I did start off by using X-Gen spheres, but unfortunately Arnold doesn't render subsurface scattering with point particles, so I changed it to an instant sphere. And there's a few expressions here just to change the shape and colour. If you want to know more about uh, XGen and how to, to use it, there's some action tutorials on the uh, Arnold documentation. I'll put a link in the description for you. So that's the coloured spheres. Then we've got some mesh uh, bubbles. So again, instant spheres for the bubbles. If I take Bubble here, and you can see I can scale up some here. I haven't touched anything with the spheres, I haven't changed the normals, they're just regular spheres. Um, I've just used a, a random to change the, the scale of them, and they're distributed uh, using a volume with a text map to change the position of the bubbles. There's another one for some smaller bubbles there. And surrounding that is this larger sphere, which has got a glass shader assigned to it. So let's just have a look at the, sh uh, the shaders. Um, so using nested dielectrics, by the way, in 6.1, that's, you can find that in the advanced tab. So it's on by default, so you shouldn't have to worry about enabling or disabling it, unless you've got uh, some old legacy scenes that you want to use the prior physically incorrect behavior. So, yeah, the glass shader, you can use a preset from the preset menu and place it there. I've got a roughness map just to break up the reflections and transmission is one. And then got to have some dispersion abbey just to give a chromatic uh, effect. I'll show the example here. So just in the corners, you can see the aberrations on the lens. Give you that microscopic feel. And then the dielectric priority is by default set to zero. So we've got zero for the glass surrounding it. And then for the bubble shader, we've got one for dielectric priority. And the bubbles, you want to make sure well, for bubbles that the IR index refraction is set to one, of air is set to one. So the main considerations, you want to learn more about uh, dielectric, nested dielectrics, this, this page here. I'll put a link in the description, but yeah, there's basically a bubble example here. So in this case, the glass surrounding the scene is one and the bubbles is set to two. Uh, if you roll over the image, you can see that uh, the default behavior of zero is, which is physically incorrect. And there's another example at the bo bottom page. And also just mentions specular ray depth. So by default, specular ray depth is one but you increase it to five, you can see it makes a dramatic difference to the appearance of the bubbles. And uh, in this case, I've used I a value of three, speculative rate, rate depth of three, but be wary that this will increase your render times as well. So on the glass shader, we've also got a uh, flakes shader going to the normal camera with the depth and step sets for 3D flakes. Let me show you the you can see the more obvious in, in this scene. And finally, I've used a Arnold fish eye lens. So under the camera, camera type fish eye and uh, change the field, field of view enabled auto crop. That just helped to give uh, some barrel distortion and more of a microscopic feel to the scene. Okay, so that's a basic overview of rendering bubbles using uh, Arnold and nested dielectrics. Thank you, bye.